Some of you don't know I am an author. I published a book more than a year ago now titled DJ Wit and Uzi. That's W-I-T, Wit and Uzi. You know, talking the cool talk. Can't say DJ with. It's got to be DJ Wit and Uzi. Yeah, and um, so some of you do know I am One Sir Grove. I am the host of this podcast, C4CW, casting 495 celebrities worldwide. Why do people flock the fucking cities, man, when the traffic is obviously fucked up? Why do people, you know what? Let me just exit this shit. You know, because I don't do the same shit that a lot of these other motherfuckers do. I'm just like, yo, man, I travel all the time, man. I travel so fucking much. And I see the most ridiculously stupid ass shit. I mean, you know, extreme weather events. And it's like, and then people want to, you know, flock to like the city. And it's like, uh, why? Like, maybe you should fucking just get somewhere like home or like hotel or like, you know, somewhere like a restaurant or like wherever the fuck you're going. You know what I mean? Like, off the roads type shit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Is it really goddamn fucking necessary to get into preposterous traffic? Like, why? Is it a computer program? Must you do it? Is it is it imperative? Is it fucking goddamn motherfucking mandatory? I'm just asking. But, you know, some people, man, they just keep doing it. They just keep doing it. And uh, guess what? I don't fucking do it. I don't fucks with it. Um, thing about being an entrepreneur, man, is that you set your own schedule. So, um, yeah, I don't fuck with rush hour shit. I, I, I have, you know, but lately I've chosen not to. I'm just like, yo, I don't, I don't need to, I don't have to, and I'm not gonna. So that, uh, brings me back to my point, being an author. So I'm working, by the way, thank you for tuning in. If you are true fans, then I, we 495 most certainly appreciate you. Uh, and we, I mean that seriously. Uh, oh, just remembered something. So, uh, yeah, man, East coast, tall buildings, uh, what was Superman able to do? Leap tall buildings with a single in a single bound. <laughs> That's incredible, man. That's fucking amazing. Um, kind of like the amazing Spider-Man. So the character that I created, Milo Cambridge, uh DJ Widenuzi book one was just a little taster to let folks know that I can write a book regardless of how well you think or not so well it's written. Doesn't fucking matter. The point was to get it out. Was to get it out. And yes, you can buy a hard copy of it. You can buy the paperback physical copy of it. Um, And you can also get the ebook. There's also an ebook. So it is available. Now, how many people have written books? Lots of people. Millions of authors worldwide. I just, you know, some people, man, they're just stupid fucking people. Grove, you're not serious. You're never going to write a book. You have Asperger's. I don't have Asperger's. And I wrote a book. And I put it out. And I'm going to put out another fucking book. Part two. Um, I mean, people just say stupid shit because they think they're psychologists. They're not licensed. Um, they think that they're psychiatrists. They're not licensed. They're not credentialed. They don't have the degree. They don't have the 20 fucking years of experience. So they just say shit. You're all over the place. Yeah, because I'm a busy person and I always am fucking highly focused on what I do. Oh no, Asperger's is high functioning. Yeah, I know I'm high functioning and I don't have Asperger's. 
So, see, I work in government, so I've been evaluated by psychologists within the Department of Defense. Um, I've been in a lot of different programs. Now, I play the role of eccentric, and I work on my own time fucking schedule. I don't work for anyone else. So if someone thinks that I'm doing all this other shit and I'm not focused on that person's project, it's because I'm not getting paid to fucking do shit for other people. So if I offer to help someone, okay, and I do however much or however little that I do, just because I'm doing a bunch of other shit doesn't mean that I have fucking Asperger's. I'm busy doing shit. So that being said, I published a book which is out. And available in the public domain. And the point, uh, larger that is, is that it was a taster. Because see, I'm a sci-fi guy. I'm a science fiction buff. Science fiction nerd power! And I mean that fucking wholeheartedly. Dude, I've been a sci-fi dude since I was a small child under the age of four. And uh, my mother actually got me into uh, sci-fi because she was in the military and she was all into sci-fi and military sci-fi. Some people haven't seen Close Encounters of a Third Kind. Some haven't seen 2001, A Space Odyssey. Dude, I saw those movies when they were brand spanking new. Um... Yeah, yeah, I come from the old school, the old school, and uh, so I've also read a lot of sci-fi stories, a lot of books, a lot of shorts, a lot of longs, front to backs, um, and so I know the sci-fi universe not just relatively well, I know it fucking really well, um... I've read some of the Star Wars books here and there in parts. Star Trek. Um, man, look, I grew up in libraries before the internet. So I used to um, get books as part of the young, um, the uh, young, young authors uh, groups that I was part of and uh, workshops and just book clubs for, for, for youth. So I was a young writer and I was with the Young Writers Workshop series, uh, invited to be part of that. And, and I was also part of the kind of general like book club for our school where kids could like buy books at discount. And my cousin and I, we would get these books and, um, we'd each get, you know, our own respective copies. And even though we lived in the same household, because my uncle took me in, um, and uh, my cousin, who's uh, almost my, we're the same year. Uh, well, I'm saying we're, we're the same age, just, you know, he's nine months older um, than me. Um, but we were in the same, you know, classes and, uh, you know, same grades throughout school. So uh, we would read books, man, together. Like I'd have my copy, he'd have his. And yeah. And uh, so. And then, and then, and then we'd be like, yo, which chapter are you on? And, um, and, and then we would like, we would check. I'm sorry, man. I'm reading some information. Someone just sent me electronically multitasking. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I, uh, I just, I was reading a, um, I was reading an article earlier, not to go off on a tangent or to change the subject, but just very quickly, uh, (laughs) I took a screenshot. I thought it was funny. Apparently Will Smith is popping up in places. He's a, he's a, he's doing a, he's a Lyft driver, I guess, doing the ride hailing ride sharing thing. And apparently he's, um, he's, uh, he's popping up as a celebrity who's out driving around. He's in a Lyft vehicle driving. He's, he's a Lyft driver now. (laughs) And, uh, I was like, wow, that's rad. That's funny. So I sent that around to, um, to my network, man, some people, you know, some folks I know, and uh, they uh, they're getting a kick out of it. And a friend of mine from um, from the college uh, dorm days, co-ed uh, dorms where I was at in at one time um, in <laughs> a long time ago, she was like, "Oh my, 
Um, <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Come on, man. I mean, imagine you're in New York and fucking for whatever reason, you don't want to drive. You don't want to catch the subway. So you just like, you know, ride hail or whatever, you know, they call it. And uh, you shoot, do the app or some shit and fucking the driver drives up and it's Will Smith. You'd be like, wait a second, dude. You look really familiar. <laughs> Shout outs to Will Smith. That shit's funny, man. That is funny. I heard Justin Bieber was doing it for a while, too. I guess a lot of celebrities are are, are doing it. <laughs> I think that shit is awesome, man. But, um, okay, so anyway, back to sci-fi. So, I mean, shit. Will Smith, man, he's a big sci-fi guy, man. So is uh, John Travolta. And so is, um, so is uh, Tom Cruise. Yeah, the more I think about it. But um sci-fi, man, is is what I'm passionate about. And just as there are actors who have to study their characters or the character for months or years in advance of a particular role, right? Um you know, I'm a voice actor. I mean, I do this podcast, right? And I'm a, and I'm a rap artist as well and I play the role of an eccentric rap artist. And, um, uh, no, I'm not really eccentric. Well, maybe a tinge. I know some people are like, dude, you're a lot eccentric. I'm really not. I'm actually an introvert. Um, pretty fucking introverted. I used to be very extroverted. Nowadays I'm more of an introvert. Um, I'm not a big crowd person. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I know how to do cake stands and shit and I know how to ollie and shit. I can ollie over motherfuckers. I'm, I'm serious. Like I can ollie and shit on the cars. Like hoods of cars and shit, and I can, like, ollie, you know, like, I know how to ollie pretty well, in fact, I was a semi-professional skateboarder, um, with the crew, and, uh, so, you know, man, I mean, I've been sociable, you know, and I, and I'm known to, like, like, you know, show up at events and shit, like, undercover, you know what I'm saying, but, I mean, um, yeah, man, I, uh, I'm more of an introvert nowadays, because I'm older, and I've done all that, like, party lifestyle atmosphere shit, like, party, party on dude um yeah now I'm, now I'm a voice actor <laughs> now I'm behind the scenes voice acting um just rapping you know cuz I'm a rapper now and uh but yeah now I play up the role of of eccentricism but again the point DJ with an Uzi book 2 so what I'm doing is I'm scouring the universe of sci-fi and, and, and real world for real world advanced technologies that are either a already, uh, in existence and lesser known and, or, and, or B, B as in Bravo, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, um, technologies that are on the horizon that are on the horizon. And uh, I, um, I'm looking at what is predicted to exist and what is thought to be, uh, around the corner, so to speak. And I have to do that for my book because the Mandela effect is very real and things get moved around and changed. And so I have to be certain that the technology that is going to uh, be in book two is different from anything that has ever been done in the world of sci-fi. Because as I revealed, my character at the end of book one, he's on he you find out that he's actually he's actually in the un, underground su- that is subterranean. I'm trying to remember what I revealed. <laughs> Milo Cambridge, when he comes out of his fractured dream state, because he doesn't know where he is or who he is, when he's coming to from hyperspace travel, he realizes that he's he's in a he's on a um, he's at a jump base. He's on he's on Mars in this underground tunnel system, and uh, uh, that heads of state that presidents and and others have access people in the defense science community, um, for interstellar, 
uh, jump. Um, and, and, and he is a scientist. He's, he's military. He's air force and he's from another earth. He's from, he's from another timeline of earth and he's been traveling throughout the multiverse. Um, so kind of like sliders, the TV show sliders, but not exact. It's like a lot of different things, but not exactly. It's, it's, I'm just saying, I'm just saying some people, they have to lie and, and they try to like disguise it. Listen, I watch sliders. Okay. It's not sliders, but there are some aspects where it's kind of, so. but you see when they travel, they know when they jump from one earth to another earth, there is no disorientation in this, in this book there is. So he doesn't fucking know who he is and he doesn't know where he's been. And book one it's just about a little boy who wakes up at night and his parents are gone. That's all book one is because it's the intro. It's the opening. At the very end, you find out that it's not really a little boy. It never was. It's Milo, Cambridge, U.S. Air Force, on fucking Mars, under the surface, in a secret tunnel system that's set up for those who travel, that is traverse transit timelines and um the technology that is being revealed um in short at the end is the technology that he carries throughout his adventures and uh so he has to be equipped in the world of dj with an uzi he has to be equipped with technology that other characters and other books and other stories have never had have never had. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, have you ever heard of a character that carries a high energy lethal laser that is used for medical procedures in the way that the gray aliens, the Zetas, the Ebens from Zeta 4 Zeta Reticuli, or some would say Reticuli, um, the Gray Zetas, they are known to, some people say, mutilate, I'm sure the Greys say operate, um, in their own language, of course, telepathically, um, I mean, look, man, we don't know why they're doing what they're doing to cattle, we just know that they're doing what they do to cattle. And uh, they use the the laser pen, and they're able to dice and you know dissect with precision uh, cattle, and leave zero trace of any fluids, zero blood, nothing of a fluid nature, and they can extract those internal organs from cows, from cattle, perfectly, and not just perfectly beyond anything that any surgeon on planet Earth is currently capable of doing. That's one of the tools, that's one of the tools that Milo Cambridge carries with him. Now, what other character, hey look, I'm I'm asking, I'm asking, okay? Because I'm looking at the world of superheroes, DC and Marvel, and I don't think any of the fucking characters in either universe, DC or Marvel, carry the Zeta Reticuli fucking laser, okay? But Milo Cambridge does, okay? Milo fucking Cambridge does because he's U.S. Air Force and he travels through time and he needs that shit that the Zetas have. Now, another thing that he has is he has woven into the fabric of his material, okay? This is how fucking creative I am, all right? And I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm just letting you know, the audience, that I went out of my way to create a character in a universe in which elements, aspects are different from that of other storylines. I come up with my own shit. It's original. Yes, Great artists think alike. Great minds think alike. Yes, I've drawn from here and there. As all artists do. 
We steal from each other, but we don't say thievery and we don't say theft. We say we draw and or we borrow. Okay? So, but listen, I didn't plagiarize and I did not steal. Milo Cambridge is a character who I thought literally for years in advance how to create a character that is different than any other fucking character in existence. All right? So, Milo Cambridge has woven into the fabric of his uniform, his clothing, his attire. Because his attire, well, I, I, okay, let me just back up. His attire is attire similar to a stealth fighter pilot. Stealth fighter pilot. I'm talking about B2. I'm talking about all the Northrop, all the, you know, class of stealth, Aurora, which, you know, I know some people like, come on, Grove, it's hypothetical. I might even, uh, you know, take a gander and say that it's fictional, therefore a mythological Grove. There is no Aurora aircraft. Well, I disagree, and I know that the, um, what is it, triangular, what is it, um, 3B, as in Bravo, some shit like that, man, um, I know that that shit is not fictional, um, and there are many different classes and many different categories and types, triangular craft totally exist, um, did we get the technology from the Ebens? Yes, we did, um, do we have our own? Of course, I just said we do, and so, the point is, I don't know of a character similar to Milo Cambridge, whose uniform, now check this out, I know you're probably like, bro, but there are characters who, if you look at their uniforms, they are similar to stealth fighter pilots. True. And I know that. Come on. <laughs> I'm one Sir Grove. Albeit, albeit, woven into the fabric of Milo Cambridge is attire are these glyphs, glyphs, that are barely noticeable. They're barely noticeable because they are black like the, like the hole of a black Aurora triangular fucking spacecraft where if you just glance, you will see the black lacquer appearing surface and then if you're a bit closer similar to Rendlesham you will notice that there are these glyphs yes it is drawn from Rendlesham but who would have ever thought what I'm about to reveal to you the reason why Milo has certain glyphs stitched that is embroidered into his clothing is that if he is ever if he is ever found in stasis if he is ever found by others of a non-human nature if they ever find him in status or I'm sorry in stasis 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 if they ever find him in stasis in other words, you know, he's frozen, like cryogenically. Um, if he's ever cryogenically frozen, they will see the glyphs, hopefully, and that particular, those particular groups of Ebens, they will realize who he is, and they will understand that he has understanding of hyperspace travel. So that is something that was, as far as I know, because though it's important to have those glyphs when you travel through space time, if you're found, if you're found in suspended animation, if you're in stasis, you might want to have some identification. So they know who you are. 
and that you're you're a fellow traveler. So um with with knowledge, with knowledge of hyperspace. So so that's what's different about my character that I created Milo Cambridge and other characters in the book uh, series and uh, the world of DJ Wooden it's, it's It's original. It's not just something that I came with, up with on the fly. And, and there's a lot more. So... Just a little backgrounder, a little bit more about DJ with an Uzi, so that when book two drops, you already fucking know, man, it'll be some award-winning shit. They'll be like, damn, bro, man, that's some shit I would have never thought of. That's the whole point, man. Has to be original. Has to be some shit that no one else has ever thought of before. So, look, man, if, if you guys find some similarities and you already know that there are some characters that exist that are similar, let me know. But I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing none of them are a match. There may be, but, man, I've done a lot of research, so we'll see, we'll see. DJ with an Uzi, Milo Cambridge, a Once to Grow. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of C4CW, casting 495 celebrities world and multiverse wide.